Jim Norton is not a doctor. He's not an expert. He's not even a good person. The views, opinions, advice, and humor of Jim Norton does not reflect those of any doctor, of Sirius XM, of OB Radio, or anyone else. They are solely those of Jim Norton, Lyle Chipperson, Edgar Mellencamp, Paul Hargis, and whoever else lives in that chinless head of his. If any of this advice goes wrong, you are the asshole who called a comedian instead of a doctor. An icon in comedy, a fighter for freedoms, an accomplished entertainer, and a pervert. You've got problems, he's got problems. You've got questions, he's got answers, some of which are good. Call now, 866-WOW-1WOW. That's 866-969-1969. This This is The Jim Norton Show. It most certainly is. For a second, I had two headphones on. I, I cannot talk with two headphones on. I hate it. It doesn't sound any different to you people, but to me, it sounds like I'm talking underwater. Do I sound normal? You do. It sounds like I'm underwater because I can only hear myself through the headphones. I don't know how people do that, how Opie does it, how anybody does it. I need one free ear. So I'm back at the facility. You probably wonder, who is Jim talking to? Because normally I'm home in my apartment, in my underpants, doing the show with a headset on, tugging my dick, talking to you people. But when I'm here, I have to wear my trousers, keep my legs crossed like a gentleman. But as you know, I'm doing the UFC podcast. I'm doing, Matt, Sarah, and I are doing uh, two episodes a week. We do um, Monday and Wednesday, and they come out on Tuesday, Thursday. So we taped today, and we had a John Jones interview scheduled, and it ran late. So I realized, um, I looked at my watch my phone my watch it was 2 30 i'm like i'll never make it home so i texted lou i said i'd like to come in and he said sure and here i am really uninteresting story uh chris in new jersey hi chris jimmy thanks a lot for uh, taking a call appreciate it all right here's the situation went out with this girl a couple months ago had a great time we're in our 40s right she texts me, really enjoyed it. You know, I want to do it again. I said the same. She's divorced with three kids, so it's tough for her to get, you know, out and stuff. Um, so, you know, okay, I understand we're not going to go out the exact, you know, next week or whatever, but uh, we still talked on social media, but there was no more going out. But she's still friendly about it, wanted right. to. Hey, let's do it the next week, next week. So it's still never materialized. Obviously, there's no interest. But sure. my question is, do I, can I or should I, like, confront her in a nice way, just ask what the hell happened. Well, let me ask you, you went out one time, you said? Yeah. And how long have you known her? We actually went to high school together. And okay. We just reconnected recently. Sorry, I don't have a call button here. Um, you know what might have happened? She might have met someone else. Or she might have gotten back with an ex, a guy she dated mm-hmm. before. You know, sometimes I, I like to ask, hey, could you tell me what happened? But other times, it's not a big deal because you only went out once. Right. Um, so it's a curiosity I, thing for me now, I think, just yeah, because I want to know, her. like, did they do something wrong, you know, that type of thing? No, you could, uh, you could ask her, hey, did you change your mind or something or whatever? You, you know, I wouldn't say you did anything wrong, but you could say, hey, I was just curious. It's obvious you don't want to go out. No problem. Start off by saying, hey, it's not a problem. This way she doesn't get defensive. Say, I'm honestly just curious. And see, what, see what she says. Yeah. But if she knows that you're not going, hey, what the fuck happened? But exactly. if you're going, hey, look, okay. it's totally cool. You don't want to go out. I respect your signals. But I'm honestly just curious as to why. Perfect you know? answer, man. That's why I called. Thank you. I appreciate right, cool. it. Then send a photo of a dead bird. All right. Uh, Kevin in Phoenix has a very poignant question. Hey, Jim. How are you doing? Hi, Kevin. Hey there. Uh, so my big question, dude, I know you're like a little old and everything, but uh, why are you still so ugly if um, you're so rich? Well, first of all, how old are you that you would call me? I, I'm a little old. I'm 47. I'm 30. Okay, so I'm not that much older than you. Um, now, what would you suggest I do with my... I don't, probably don't have as much money as you think I do, but I will carefully weigh your question. Now, what do you think I should do and, and, and with my money? I know that you sometimes wear makeup, so maybe you could do a little more. I don't wear makeup, though. The only time I wear what? makeup is only if I'm shooting something. Well, he's a gorgeous in those scenes, not in person, though. I didn't hear what you said, buddy. <laughs> Now your phone crapped out. 
That's true. I'm so rich, my cell phone works. We didn't hang up on him. I saw what he was going to say, but I wanted to hear his suggestions. I don't know, Kevin. Um, call back if you like. I'll be happy to chat with you about my appearance. I'm certainly not offended. I've made a decent living attacking myself verbally. Uh, let's see, Matt, Matt in Illinois. Hello. Hi, Jim. Hi, Matt. Um, so, I'm 18. I'm gay. You can fucking tell from the voice. And I've been dating this guy for about six weeks. And I'm going to be going to college in about another six weeks. I really like him. I think we have a great thing going on. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do long distance. And I don't know what I should I don't know how to have that conversation with him or when I should tell him or what I'm supposed to do here. Well, you're 18. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to maintain long-term relationships when you're 18 anyway. And how old is he? He's 17. Oh, okay. Well, you might just have to be honest with him and say, look, we can try this thing. And then maybe it just kind of slowly fades away. Or maybe you want to stop the bleeding before you go and just go, look, um, you know, I, I want to uh, just end this here because I know I don't want to cheat. Now, are you going to be heartbroken or are you ready to move on? I don't know yet. Um, okay. I'm just not sure what I feel yet. Well, maybe you can say that. Like, hey, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Like, do you have to make a decision right now? I, I don't think there's any pressure to do it now, now. Well, then don't pressure yourself. When are you going away? I'm going away mid-August. Okay, so you got a couple of months. So why don't you just, uh, you know continue fucking and enjoy yourself and then see how you feel at the beginning of August and have a talk then. Thank you. You should brutally fuck all through July. That's my suggestion. Uh, that was my plan as well. <laughs> all right. Uh, Thank so, you. All right, man. See ya. Uh, let's see. Uh, Adam in Kansas. I certainly relate to this. How are you? Hey, how's it going, man? I'm good, buddy. Hey, real quick, man. It's just uh, I got this job. I've had it for some time. I've been in the same kind of job. It's a thrift business. I don't know if you know anything about the thrift business. I do not. Tell uh, me about it. Well, you know, you you get a bunch of goods. Uh, you got to search through people's shit all the time oh. and dig to find the good stuff. But you know, I like my job for the most part. But here recently, I've been kind of in a funk, and I'm not quite sure what the hell's going on. How old are you, and how long are you doing that? I just turned thirty uh, Monday, and I've been doing it for. Off and on about nine years. I got nine years background in it, so. So you're probably, 30 is a weird time. It's yeah. like you look at yourself, okay, I'm an adult now. There's no more yeah. 20s, now it's 30. Are you married, girlfriend, and maybe you said that, kids? I am, I am married, and I have two, two little girls. So sometimes maybe you get to a point where, like, this is not what I saw my life ending up as. Maybe this is not where I want to be in 25 years. And when you become 30, it seems like 25 years or the age of 50 becomes a tangible number. It's like, wow, I'm really a big boy now. What am I going to do with myself? Is that yeah. part of it, maybe? A little bit. You know, it's like, in love, you know, I'm, I love my job. I do really like it. But, you know, just things, you know, you get beat up here and there, you know, you, you kind of stupid little things happen. But, you know, be before all this, um, I seem to really enjoy it. And now it's just kind of like, it's like, fuck, man, what am I doing? You might be a little bored, you know? dude. But it, it happens. We get a little bit bored sometimes. We get like, um, you know, we, we get a little bored. Sometimes you want to just find something new. So, you know, you don't have to stay in this job, do you? Can you find something else? Oh, I mean, of course I can find something else. But, you know, it's just one of those things like, do I want to have a job? Do I want money? Do I want to take care of my family? Do I want to sit around like these idiots? Praying and oh god, I hope I get a job. You know, some stupid like that. Well, maybe you can do a little bit of everything. Maybe you can find a job you love and take care of your family. Like you don't have to make a decision where it's only one. Just don't make. My only advice to people with stuff like this, because I've been lucky, I found my career very early. You okay. don't want to make a crazy decision. Like in my job, there's been times where I'm like, do I jump? Do I stay? Like with radio, what am I doing in October? I really don't know. And, right. I'm, I, and, and it's because the uncertainty of not having that steady paycheck. Look, it's nice to make money, man. It's nice to have your, you know, you have bills to pay. You know, yeah. so you're like, I have to think of that. I can't just say, hey, fuck it. I'm going to go out and do everything I want to do. And all of a sudden you don't make money and your fucking apartment gets taken away. But you have to like what you do as well. So I would say, why don't you start looking while you keep this job? There's no reason you have, you're not going to quit and then look. So look while you have a job. Very true. I appreciate that. Okay. I, you know, it's just, it's just sometimes you get into a funk and you're like, man, you like what you're doing, but you just don't know where to go. And you don't know if you're just tied up with it or if it's just you. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I know what you mean. But yeah, sometimes just a little change of pace helps. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, buddy. Thanks for calling. Uh, John in Arizona. Hi, John. Jimmy. What's up, bud? Hey there, Jimmy. Hey. Um, uh, is there an unwritten rule in comedy uh, when you're allowed to start making jokes about tragedy, celebrity death, 
or is there like certain subjects that you guys just don't go near? I can't think of any type of an unwritten rule. If it's a mass death, maybe you want a body count before you start, but there's no real unwritten rule because too soon, no matter when you do a 9-11 joke, it's going to be too soon for somebody. If you have any jokes about the, uh, the, the Pulse shooting, it's going to be too soon for somebody. So, um, you know, apparently Titanic is not too soon for anybody at this point. So I don't, I don't think there is any unwritten rule. I think it's all your personal comfort, how much you believe in the joke, and where you put the joke. And it's totally individual to the different comics. All right. All right. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Jimmy. All right, my friend. Uh, Andy in Georgia, what's up? You're watching going to a bachelor party, huh? Yeah, what's up, dude? Hey, I saw you in Buckhead, uh, Georgia show. Um, oh, I love that crowd. I'm going to put those, uh, there's some certain photos, meet and greet photos I'm going to put up, too. What's up? Yeah, I took my wife. She actually loved it. Um, anyway, this is about my wife. We've uh, been together 10 years and um, get along really well. Anyway, her, her cousin, which is uh, considerably younger, is getting married um, early next year. She's having a bachelorette party. And, uh, of course, invites my wife. Now, my wife's about to the drinks, and every now and then she will, and it usually just does not go well. That's why she does it. So, I mean, I'm having a hard time with it. I mean, it's just got bad road on it for me. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, well, she'll be hanging out with a bunch of younger 20-somethings and drink too much, and uh, it's in Miami. So, I mean, just a lot of bad shit can go down. I mean, Has she ever cheated on you? No. Has she ever uh, been caught not, dirty text? Do you think she's going to fuck someone else? No, I don't, I don't think it's that. I'm oh. not worried about her fucking somebody else. I mean, I, you know, I, I really ain't. But it's just uh, just more just, just, I don't know, just a bad situation, I feel like. You know, and I don't know. I just feel like there's too much shit that can go wrong. And and uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, probably about if we were more normal drinkers and just, uh, you know, I felt comfortable with that. And maybe so, but to see the few times she has you know, drank alcohol and, and it just <laughs> she doesn't handle it well. Did you talk to her about this and go, look, I'm a little concerned? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, you know, I don't want to fucking be a dick. You know, at the same time, I'm like, look, I, if you want to go, go. I, I don't, you know, don't, don't not go because of me. So, well, I guess all you can do is just. Let her know that. I mean, you can't tell her not to go um, unless you're old school. Like, I be, I'm a big believer in Sharia law, so I think you should forbid her to go. All right, I'll be your ass. Good deal. You don't have to beat her. You can just forbid her verbally. Um, you don't need to hit her. Sharia law, should your your strength should be in your your tone. But no, I don't know. You, okay. All you can do is talk to her and then just hope for the best. You can't tell your spouse not to go somewhere. No. Nah. Uh, what you, you could do, if I ever didn't want a girlfriend to do something, I mean, I know you're married, but what I would do is if they were going to like go away with their friends or if there was a funeral I didn't want them going to, I'd pull out my dick before they left the house and I'd say, well, I hope you know I'm going to be renting this puppy out while you're away. So maybe you might, might want to try that. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> All right, good luck, buddy. Christina in Boston, hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hello. Good, how are you? Good luck, thank you. So... I need some advice. Sure. Um, I've been in a relationship for about four years, and um, my previous relationship was an open relationship, and it kind of worked. Um, was it don't ask, don't tell, or you guys would talk about it and then have sex? Oh no, we would talk about it. Like we would, it was we would just say we were going on play date. Was there any jealousy? No, we were good about it. Okay. It was all right. Um, and so, well, that relationship ended, and so when I, a couple of years into, um, this relationship, this current relationship, I, um, I brought up, let's do open relationship, and, and, um, he was okay, he was open to it, he was kind of weirded out about it, um, but he found somebody to, to play with, and, um, went out and did it. And you were um, okay with it? And I'm fine with it. I'm fine. I I personally feel like um, that people should, you know, if if everybody's open and, and clear and honest, go have fun, play, you know, separate sex from emotion, you know. Okay. Um. So, but he so he found somebody and and went out and did it, and then ended it before, like he stopped it before, um, I could go play. 
Oh, so, so he went out and got some, and then he goes, I don't want an open relationship. Exactly. Anymore. He couldn't handle it. He said, I can't handle seeing you fu- or thinking about you fucking somebody else. Did he fuck this girl? He did. He How many did. times? Twice, I believe. In the same night now, or on different occasions? No, on different occasions. Over how um, long a period of time? Just a very just a very short period of time, not even a month, a cu- like a couple of times. That's a little shitty of him to do. It's a little shitty, and so and I that I felt like that, and so I cheated on him, and I got back to like basically to get back at him. Oh, that's so. good. At least you guys are handling it in a healthy fashion. So wait, you you, <laughs> you cheated on him, you fucked somebody he doesn't know. Oh no, no, we found out. This is just backstory. I'm sorry. Let how did he find out? Just tell me how he found out. Um, he read a text message. Which you left there on purpose? No. Okay. No, but, you know, whatever, it's karma, and then that happened. Yes. So, fast forward a couple of years, just recently, he had said he'd met somebody that he was interested in, and he brought up again to open up the relationship. So I'm like, you know what? All right, let's try it, whatever. He found somebody, I actually found somebody that I was going to, you know, start going out, uh, doing, playing with, whatever. And he fucked this girl. And then as soon as, like, two days before I was supposed to go and have my little play date, he fucking closes it and says, nope, that's it, I, I can't handle this. Well, then what he's doing is, uh, there's an old expression. Somebody once said to me, Jim, you'd like your cake and you want to fuck other girls. Yeah. That's what this guy wants. I don't blame him. Every guy wants to fuck other girls while the rules are different. Now, he probably thinks this. Because you've been in an open relationship, you can handle it. It's not a big deal. He doesn't realize that what he's doing is kind of selfish and shitty. Um, and he does, oh, he does know you cheated on him. So I, I don't think that... Uh, I, I, I think that you should be able to go out and have sex with whoever you want, hopefully a comedian. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, you know, he, can't, he can't open it and then close it. Oh, you have? Oh, God, yeah. You fuck comedians? I have, yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> How were they? Fabulous. Oh, cool. I, I make little honking be- noises while I eat pussy. A lot of people, I figure they like the clown sound, so I'm like, honk, honk. That's awesome. Uh, well, so what do you want to do? I don't want to fuck this guy. Ooh, I like hearing that. <laughs> If I was your boyfriend, I would just make you tell me that while I jerked off into your shoes. So you want to fuck this guy. What are you going to do? I can't. I'm going to try. I'm going to try and keep keep trying to get him to open up this relationship. And, like, does I want to be like, go, go fuck this girl one more time. And while you're going to fuck this girl, I'm going to fuck this guy. Go. Yeah, you might want to tell him he can't do that again. Like, if you decide to acknowledge or or honor his thing, you might say to him, this is the last time you're allowing him to open and close it. Yeah. All right? All right. Call back and let me know what happens. (laughs) I will. Thanks, Jimmy. Ah, Frank Ah. in New York. How you doing, Frank? Hello? Hello, Jeff. Hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm all right, thanks. Uh, so, uh, my question to you is looking for some advice. My uh, my wife, is uh, she's packed a few pounds on. I mean, is there a nice way, a, a way to tell her that she's starting to look a little fat? Maybe I'd like for her to lose some weight. Wow. Um... It's mooing noises, make mooing noises when she walks by. Um, no, I, I don't know. Whew, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. How about when she walks into the room, you can go, ow! And when she says, what did you say? You can go, that wasn't me. That was the floorboards. Um, no, I, I don't know. A Latin girl, I mean, she's from South America, and uh, she's got a I know she'll tear me apart if I say anything to her about it, you know? Well, maybe know when you're to... in the car, only make right turns and say, for some reason, the car is doing this. <laughs> if she's in the passenger seat, she's going in a circle. I don't know. Uh, maybe you could suggest going to the gym together. Like, you could say something yeah. like, you know, hey, you know, um, I'm going to the gym. You know, do you want to come with me, a pig? Or maybe leave off the a pig part. But you could say, I'm going to the gym. Do you want to come? Or start not, not leaving snack foods around the house. Well, you know, that's a very, very tough one to do, obviously, because you don't want to offend the person. 
I know. I mean, I, I've even brought up, like, the, you know, the junk food with her before. She said, yeah, yeah, okay. And I, she's fucking hiding it from me now. Oh, that's bad. I fucking fuck rappers and shit in her car. Oh, no. You, I hope you mean the candy and not the people. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it's just, uh, how, how much weight did she put on? Say that again? How much weight? Uh, she's put on... So after she had a kid, she lost pretty much all the weight, and then she put on maybe like, I'm going to say like 30 pounds, 25. That's a lot. Uh, and she won't stop eating? She doesn't eat that much around me, man. She's doing it all when I'm not around. Yeah, binge eating and stuff. Uh, food addiction. Well, I guess all you can do is talk to somebody, and, and like, but without being judgmental. Like, look, I think right. this is a problem. Uh, it's really, I know my friend one time told me that his wife had put weight on and they didn't have sex much. And he had told me that it turned him off that she put weight on. And he had said to her, she said, we don't have sex much. And he said to her, well, I would have sex more probably if you were in better shape. And he, she got mad and they had a fight, but she did get into better shape. Oh, this, you know what? There's a guy named Joe. We're going to let you go, Frank. There's a guy named Joe who has a perfect answer. We have a couple of people calling in, so we're going to try them. Maybe we'll get you some experiential advice, okay? All right. Good luck, Frank. Um, Joe in Boston, what's your answer? So what's up, Jimmy? Hey, hey buddy. There's a, there's a uh, perfect King of Queens episode that dealt with this specific problem. Oh, cool. And... Carrie had put on some weight, and Doug wanted to find a way to tell her, and he just he basically said, hey, we should start working out together, emphasis on we. Then they were Lou Ferrigno, the next-door neighbor, had a yard sale. They bought a bike or whatever and had Lou Ferrigno come over and train them. So all this guy really has to do is go find out where Lou Ferrigno lives, move in next to, do, next to him, Wait for him to have a yacht sale, and then make his move. You know, that's a pretty good idea, up to the whole Lou Ferrigno part. Um, that's what I said. Say, yeah, let's go to the gym together. Suggest it as a team sport, and maybe she'll get into it. Um, that's a good idea. I never saw that King of Queens, but the wisdom that comes out of that show never ceases to amaze me. Megan in Indy, hello. Hi, how are you? Cool, how are you? Um, I had a comment on the weight gain thing. It's really hard to, for one to tell a woman that she's gained weight and to lose it. I know. The best way is to honestly buy a gym membership and take her out shopping for some new clothes. Um, oh, there you go. Okay. Get her a couple outfits, workout outfits, and then tell her, like, hey, I bought a gym membership for you, for you and your girlfriend to go to. Because the girls are not going to work out with the guys. I can tell you that. But just, yeah, just. Like, hey, I bought you and your girlfriend a gym membership. They were kind of giving them out for work, and, you know, here's 100 bucks to go shopping for some new outfits. Very nice. Good idea. Um, hopefully she'll want to wear it, though. And then you have to say something like, and don't fatten up so these don't fit. <laughs> right. Well, that's why you let her do the shopping. <laughs> oh, you take her shopping. Okay. All right. Good idea. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Steve in Maine. Good question. Hi, Steve. Hey, Jim. <clears throat> Big fan. Uh, I'm just wondering if you have ever thought about writing for movies. Um, I know that today in modern movies, your voice would be um, a bit different from a lot of the writing that goes on right now. Have you ever entertained that thought? I'll hang up and listen. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I have, sure. But it's a matter of, you know, committing myself to actually focus and write for a movie. Um, I've had a bunch of movie ideas and a bunch of ideas. Like, I have one idea... I want to do a movie, but I want it to be like a trilogy, like Star Wars. But it's about a guy who works in a sofa store. And um, his idea is he wants to make the world's greatest sectional. And um, he keeps making them too long. Like he makes them 50 feet wide by two feet deep. And no one will buy his sectionals. So he goes through this whole thing of making fabric. And they come out and it's the wrong color. And that's like the cliffhanger for the next one. And then he gets a new regional manager, and the regional manager commits a bunch of rapes and murders, but then he helps him figure out how to make the sectionals. <laughs> this is not a good movie idea. I don't know, buddy. My idea of entertaining is not everyone's. Ant in California. Hello. Yeah, hey, what's up, bro? Good. I'm um, good, man. How are you? Hey, I totally thought that uh, that phone number that you posted on Twitter was fake because it had too many 69s in it. No. <laughs> 
No. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm just I'm just drunk as shit, and I just randomly call the phone number, and I actually got a person on the line, and I'm like, it's a miracle oh my of God. phone number when you dial it and someone answers it. In this day and age, everybody's texting, nobody talks anymore. So you're really yeah, drunk. No. You're in California. It is a little after noon in California. Why are you drunk so early? When that dude picked up, I was like, wait, somebody actually picked up. Oh shit! No, no, I, I understand your amazement. I understand your amazement. Um, so wh wh why are you drunk at 12.30 in the afternoon? Uh, because I work and uh, and I got off early. What, and do, you, I like what do you do? Okay. And I like to drink Grey Goose. I'm not going to tell you what I do. Why? But I like to drink Grey Goose. Once a week I get shit phase drunk and I go on Twitter and I Twitter shit. Then I saw your phone number and I was like, let me call this. And I would like to say that, uh, Jim, I like your comedy and... Dude, you 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 be getting uh, skinny as fuck, dude. You're getting skinny and uh, you're looking good, bro. Well, you're thank skinny, you. Skinny, you're looking good. You got some shit. I saw Matt. Uh, the Matt Matt Sarah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I remember. I don't know. I'm drunk shit, but uh, that dude's cool as fuck. And I like your comedy. And I want to say to the previous girl that was on there, uh, all she needs to do is just be like, hey, you know, I like I like you because you're my boyfriend. And I'll suck your dick any time, and that's it. And everybody else that's on hold listening to me right now, I hope you have your dick out, and you, you got some fire. All right, and we got to, and we, not that this is not an entertaining call, but I do have people on the line. But I appreciate your call, and hopefully you'll keep uh, listening. Okay, buddy. Thank you. I love you. I love you, bro. Thanks, Thanks Ann. Take care. Uh, let's see, Justin in Oklahoma. Hi, Justin. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm oh, pretty good. I was going to ask, man. I remember on the show uh, on the. Sophie and Jimmy show a while ago, you were saying something about uh, canceling your VIP ticket things because you didn't want to charge people for what you were already doing. But then uh, a couple of days ago or something, you mentioned putting it back on because the venues were getting kind of mad at you. They were put back on, yeah. And we figured out a way to do it. And another part of the problem is that uh, there's been times where I've had to do interviews after, and I'm standing outside sometimes for an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. Um, and it just got to be exhausting. And then you, by the time you get out of the venue, it's late, and I got to do phoners later. And the venues were getting annoyed too because they're not making any money when that's happening. So yeah, they are on. Uh, so what do you want to know about Oklahoma? There is one. Some of them don't have them. I, I usually don't know until I get there which one has them and which ones don't because I don't keep up with it. Yeah. So you said there is one in Oklahoma. I don't know. You're saying if there is one, you have to check. Oh, I'm, I'm only okay. going by your you have question about VIP tickets to Oklahoma show. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. I saw them on there. I just ended up. I was holding off on them because of what you had said before. But I was just making sure before I decided to, to jump up and spend that extra money. Yeah, that was on those why. Tickets, but. A part of me too, you know. I, I, afterwards, like I, I would stand outside. I guess it was worse in comedy clubs because you're doing it two shows a night. But it's a long time, dude. And, and after a while, you're like, why am I standing out here like a fucking asshole like no other comics i know do this like i'm just like a fucking putt standing here you sometimes you know you get uh i started getting down on myself for doing it as well but the venue's complaining was the main issue um, oh, okay well that's no problem man i'll definitely end up end up getting those on there to meet you that's uh that show in edmund is the day before my birthday so okay. we're gonna me and a bunch of friends and my dad are gonna be up there and if you can't afford it or whatever or you don't want to do it you know i'm always around uh after the show when i'm leaving you can get me you know i mean i never say no so i'll see you there either way okay all right, brother. Well, I'm really excited to see the show, man. I can't wait to see you. All right, it's my first gig out there. I cannot wait, so thanks so much. All right, thanks. Hey, Chris in Rochester, this sounds like good news. What's up? Yeah, Jim, my girlfriend had nice, big, sexy feet to begin with. What size? I don't know what size. Probably, you know, I don't know, 8, 11, nice, probably. Nice, nice. So, after the pregnancy, they get a little bigger. Okay. And now she's self-conscious about it. Well, tell old canoe shoes that you like. She fucking like her big feet. <laughs> That's kind of funny because I call her canoe feet. Do you really? I she, yeah, she could water ski with like a bare feet, no problem. Oh, good. Tell old fucking Mad Magazine feet that you like her giant tootsies. Do you like her feet? Yes, I, I jack off on them at night and shit. And she wakes up and she fucking you know she asks what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm just pleasure myself on your feet, honey. What do you want That's to do? a little creepy when a woman is it with is child cool. asleep and you're jerking off on her feet. Jesus, that's a little creepy. Why don't I just wake her up and do it? Honey, wake up, huh? Ugh. I got a 13 month old son. I don't want to wake her up. I'd rather just have everybody sleeping and me take care of business. I think you like the sneaky aspect of it, too. I know I would. I do. All right, Cosby. Well, I appreciate it. All right, buddy. Enjoy. Uh, let's see here. 
It's an interesting question. Joe in Jersey. Hello, Joe. Hey, uh, this is uh, Joe out of Missouri. Oh, Missouri. But, Sorry. Hi, Joe. Yeah. But I, it's kind of what the other guy was just talking about. Do you still wait around and say hello to everybody after the show? You did that one time here in Kansas City. I couldn't believe how generous you were with your time. I don't do it anymore, um, or rarely will I do it. A, like I said, venues complain. B, I felt like a dick and it got exhausting. Um and sometimes I'm doing press afterwards, which, you know, I would rather do right after the show. If I get to do a phone call, I would rather do it right after the show. Um, but, yeah, I mean, occasionally I'll still do it. Well, I sure hope you don't beat yourself up for not doing it anymore. No, I don't. Get bigger and bigger. I mean, that's, that was just an amazing thing. So you're very generous to your fans, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. All right, let's see. Uh, who are we talking to? Oh, Joe, I'm sorry. This is you. Hey, Joe. Quick question. I, I try to get to the point of, of two things. The call that you got before from the drunk idiot, that annoys the shit out of me because I've been sober for 23 years. How do you deal with comedy clubs and people coming up to you? Does that hurt your sobriety or does that help you to see what an idiot some people are when they drink. Well, it, it, it can be a little annoying, but the reality is alcohol also helps the shows, too, because it loosens people up. When they're super drunk, it doesn't. They talk. They heckle. But a lot of times I make it as a positive. I'm like, hey, I'm glad that's not me. I'm glad I'm not the drunk guy making an asshole out of myself or, or drunk at noon or yelling out in a club or getting thrown out. So yeah. normally it will it will just kind of uh, you know bring my memory back to where it belongs and it uh, just reminds me of what I don't want to be. There you go. That's me too, man. So I'm I'm glad I'm not alone. So. No, not at all. Oh, yeah. keep it going, man. Thank you very much. Take care, Joe. Hi, Gina in California. A lot of girls calling in today. I like it. I like a diverse show. Penises and vaginas. Yes, and mm. Gina is thin vagina. Thin vagina. Anyway. Gina, yes, anyways. Well, so, um, oh, thank you. You and okay, your, so your pita bread lips. Hello, thanks for calling in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my question is, I just want to know if you have any advice for a young lady that might be dating a comic soon. I like, would, yeah. getting some well, uh, I, I would say my first bit of advice is if you really want to impress him, you should give Jim Norton a blowjob. He's probably like, oh, he's <laughs> kind of cool. So you want to, there's really no difference than anybody else. Comics tend to be depressive at times. We, we tend to be a little down about things. We become obsessed with work. Uh -huh. So get used to being very much in comedy clubs a lot and having him obsessed with it. And, um, I Um, the person you're seeing show. I mean, sure. You, Just be prepared for the fact that some of your personal life might be in the act. Oh. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to go that far. But I don't know. It just seems like the person I'm talking to is very funny all the time. And, you know, when we're talking one-on-one, -on -one, I'm just wondering if that's like just, I don't know. I wonder if that's hard to do all the time in a relationship. Well, yeah, he's not going to be the fucking... You know, he's not going to be running around like fucking Robin Williams at, you know, comic relief. But, I mean, I'm sure he'll be naturally funny. You know, I'm sure he'll make you laugh at times. I don't know if, you, if I have the balls for this, but... Oh, you'll enjoy. He's just a regular dude. What, are you going to date a fucking dentist? He's got his fingers in people's gums all day and then he hangs himself? Date a comic. <laughs> okay, good. I will. I think I am right now. Okay, right, good you, luck. Jim. Good luck. Uh, Brandon in Mississippi. What are you, Brandon? A horse or something? My Sorry, I'm being clever. My fucking peck is not working. <laughs> What's wrong with it, Brandon? Um, I guess for the last, I don't know, five or six years, I hooked up with women. I got no problem getting it up. Um, the sex is great. feels awesome, but I can never finish. Wow. Um, it's, even to the point, it's even to the point where I've actually, I've actually faked it several times. Interesting. Um, what What is it you need to come when you're jerking off? Uh, porn. So do you do anything like tweak your nips or play with your balls? No. You just need porn. Is it possible you could watch porn with one of your girlfriends, or are you watching things you don't want them to know about? Uh, it's not that I'm watching things that I don't want them to know about. It's just I haven't got up the courage to ask any of them to watch it with me, because I think that's actually what I do need. I think you need to do that because if you're having trouble, tell them, look, I'm having trouble coming. It's nothing to do with you. 
Because they might want to know why can't you. Do they ever say, hey, why can't you make clumsy? Uh, yeah, they do. They're like, why can't you finish? I mean, I've had a girl this past week, you know, just walk into my bedroom and I'm asleep and just start giving me a blowjob for 45 minutes. And what happens? And it doesn't work. All her morning bed is all over your dick and you're like, all right. Exactly. She's... She's like, uh, well, I guess I can't get you off this way. And then we have start fucking, and she still can't get me off. Get to the point to where it starts hurting, and I, so, I, just, I can't finish. So then what do you do? You just start jerking off? Yeah, I go to the shower or something. Why the shower? Maybe you need to bridge it. Can you jerk off and come in front of them? Uh, yes, actually, I have done that. So why don't you do that and bridge it, like play with them a little bit, and then jerk off to make yourself come? Yeah, i got to do something because it's getting kind of weird with girls to where, you know, they're wondering why. I can't get off. How about yeah. you come in your hand and then you grab her tits and you go, ah, there you go. So, yeah, see, I would be into that, but I don't know if she would. <laughs> or throw it in her hair like multiple migs. Yeah. Or smell your cunt. Yeah, I would say but, just yeah. jerk off with them helping you. Let her help you. Like, let her tweedle your balls, lick your nipples, put her hiney on your face, whatever makes you happy. And that will kind of bridge it where you'll be coming with her but also jerking off. Well, I appreciate him. Hey, man, love you in Birmingham. Drove four hours to come see you out there. Absolutely the best show I've ever seen. Well, okay. thank you very much. All right, bud. Thanks. Hi, Scott in Rochester. Sorry I'm yawning today, guys. I didn't sleep well last night as usual. What's up, Scott? Hi, Jim. How are you? Good, buddy. How are you doing? Good. So my issue is with my girlfriend. Uh, two of us, we're both probably overly sexual. Ooh. and has an amazing relationship. Uh, but a couple weeks ago, uh, came home and I was flipping through the iPad and I found a video that she had made with one of her past relationships. Okay. And it was a, it was a current video. So you, she, you, you, it, now it's an open relationship. So you knew she fucked this guy? I knew she fucked him before. While you were together, uh, while we were together, uh, I, you know, we've and we've had the relationship where as long as we tell each other, you know, hey, this might happen, that might happen, or this happened, that happened, it's been okay. Usually, it's before something's going to happen, you just let somebody know. This time, uh, I found out about it about a month after it happened. She tried to deny it. I'm like. I got the video right here. It's time stamped. Uh, you know, her reasoning was she was mad at me and decided that she was just going to do it. Right. Uh, you know, I think I'm past it one minute, and then it, like, turns back around. And, so. Yeah, open relationships can be tricky because the rules are very kind of fluid. One thing is this. A lot of times I notice it's the high of something, the idea of it that turns me on so much. Like I'll talk, I talk so much more than I fuck. Like when I'm with girls, I'll talk about cuckolding. I'll talk about them fucking me with a strap on, all the dirty stuff. And I've played a little bit in those areas, but 90% of it is just talking because there's very rarely a penalty for talking. And once you have to keep upping the ante for it to feel taboo, that's when things can get dangerous. So from talk, first talking about it seems very, ooh, that's dirty and sexy. And then doing it, ooh, that's upping the ante. Okay, and then after that, it's like, well, now I'm allowed to do it. So, ooh, do it behind his back or her back. That's upping the ante. So maybe that's a part of it. So can you, you know, is it the only time you think it's happened? Uh I think so. And it's uh, bad if she's using that as revenge, because that's something you do whether or not you're in an open relationship. Well, I was mad at you, so I went and fucked someone else. That's cheating. It was. And, and yeah, she's apologetic. She said, you know, she knows she fucked up. Okay. I get that. I love her. You know, I mean, we've, we've done some freaky things. You know, we've swung. We've done different things. She's, she probably has a higher sex drive than I do. Oh. Um, you know, and part of it is that she was in a submissive relationship with him before. So she was a sub to him being a dom? Yes. And you're submissive to her? No. Oh, okay. You spank her? Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe you could incorporate this into your sex play. Give her a spanking. Oh, I saw your video. Oh, oh, oh. And say like that. <laughs> You know, part of it is she tells me she wants she wants to have more of the loving relationship with me, and every once in a while she needs to get that 
dirty. She needs to be spanked. She oh, no. She wants you to be the good guy while she goes out and has a bull fucking... Go. No, that's... Fuck that. that, that no. That no. That pissed me off. I don't blame you. No. All of a sudden, me and this guy are mad at this girl. No. But I wouldn't go for that. That's like saying, you're going to get the fun part of me, and he's going to get to stick his dick where the shit comes out. Oh, well, boo for me. No, you oh. should be getting the complete picture. Okay. That's where I'm at. Okay, and buddy. It's just been bothering me, and I figured you're about the only person I could talk to about it without going completely off the deep end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I think you have a legitimate gripe there. Just talk to her. Okay. Bye-bye. Hi, Jeff in New Jersey. Interesting question. What's up? Jim, what's going on, buddy? Hey. Uh, I'm um, a bass player. I actually play in a Black Sabbath cover band. Ah. I flew out a couple years ago to the bass player live uh, to the tribute they did to Geezer. Geezer about yeah. You, you hosted it. But yes. It seemed like it was a, uh, really unorganized. And at the end of the night, you, you seemed pretty pissed off about the whole thing. And you, you finished the night with a statement. I don't remember what it was, but I was like, wow, what the fuck happened? And I had meeting a call you. Smoke. I don't remember. I remember they were very nice, but it was very, very disorganized. Um, and what happened was they wanted me as the host of it to do material. And I remember they wanted me to do material while they set up the stage behind me. And then the music or the curtain would just lift. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way with a punchline. <laughs> I'm getting to a punchline, the curtain's going to lift. So I finally started just doing it off stage. And I wound up introducing Sebastian Bach or somebody else because they were supposed to be go on because I had been given the wrong paper. And then Sebastian Bach and, and his guys went on. It was yeah. very frustrating. Um, you know, I like an event to be organized. They don't have to be perfect. Lemmy's birthday party was like that, just a little disorganized. Uh -huh. Rock and roll is kind of hard to organize. But I love Geezer Butler so much, and I have such an affection for Sabbath and anything involving. That's the only reason I did that. I don't yeah. think I got paid for that. I think I just wanted to do anything that involves Geezer Butler. And Tony Iommi, the same thing. If they said, "Hey, look, uh, listen, we're uh, we're uh, we're we're encouraging child slave labor wages um, in foreign countries," Tony Iommi is sponsoring it. I'd go. I'd be I'd, I'd go fucking for child uh, child uh, slave hard labor whatever they do you know where they pay him a nickel a day in a, a, a sweatshop if Tony Iommi was behind it Jim Norton's behind it so I was kind of bummed out because I love Geezer so much but yeah, it wasn't it was anything I was show. truly mad about I was just a little bit bummed yeah it was a great show man One, once in a lifetime to see all those guys up there doing that yeah. yeah there were some amazing musicians and I guess that's the important part so I, I did enjoy it all hey, right? one more thing can I ask you one more thing sure can can you, uh, not can you, but uh, Jim Spiration. The, the, I know they're kind of like a parallel uh, personality to uh, Kirk. Kirk Cinnamon, Cinnamon, sure. Right, right. I don't even remember how they would go. Um, I remember there would be something like, you know, keep your mind on your money, but your hand on your heart. I don't really remember them as well. I stopped doing them. And then Kirk just kind of comes in and just talks. And it's just so natural. But inspiration is good no matter where it comes from. I remember I had heard that once. <laughs> right on. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you very Bye. much. Oh my God, we have so much more fun. Um, uh, let's see here. How about Paul in Minnesota? Hi. Hey, Jimmy. How are you? Uh, doing all right. Doing all right. Okay. Got a interesting thing going on here. Sounds um, like it. Yeah, the wife and I. You know, we've gotten a bit distant over the last year or so, and kind of seen, you know, after you've been with somebody a while, you know their tendencies and what's going on, and all of a sudden, the last few weeks, she's changed, and that's why I started trying to figure out what's changed, and I did a kind of a shitty thing. I went in, and I, you know, looked at some text messages on her iPad, and seen that she's been talking with some of her friends about one hook up with this this girlfriend of hers and I would be okay with it if we were in a good place right. if we were in a good place and she came to me and said hey I wanted to do this I'd have no problem in the world with it yeah. but since we're not I, I got an issue and, it, and it's, it's just bugging me and I don't know how to approach it because I went in and I looked at her stuff and that's how I know and that's that's what's bothering me. Yeah, that's a tough one because you don't want to admit that you spied or give up that you have the password, so you can't do it again. Um, maybe can, can you get her to admit it somehow? Talking to her, like say maybe I, one night you have a hot, you have a tacos, 
for dinner. And you say, I, I had these because I figured you'd enjoy them. And then just glare at her with anger. <laughs> no, that's not the right idea. Uh, maybe you could just talk to her and say, like, I don't feel like we're in a good place. What do you think we should do? Um, see if you can get her to admit it first. And then you may have to talk to her, dude, because you don't want her to go out and do it. And then you feel like you've been cheated on. Well, yeah. And that's that's the thing. You know, I mean, in my thing, I, I see it as being okay, but if she does it without talking, then it's cheating. And then I don't have a... Yeah, know, better you have an argument about you having to look looked at her iPad than her having cheated. Yeah, that's... That's true. You know what I'm saying? So why don't you see if you can get her to admit it and then start to do it. Like if I'm ever going to bring up a hard thing, what I'll do is I'll get up in the living room and I'll start pop locking. Like, you know what I mean? Like an old 80s break dance. That will always get a girl like really turned on and she'll start watching me and then I'll just start talking about whatever I want to. <laughs> All right? All right, Jimmy. Good luck. All right. Thank you, brother. Brian in Hartford. Hi, Brian. Jimmy? Yes, sir. Um, sure. I'm, I'm really just a fan, so I just wanted to ask... Um, but, but you know, there was a while ago you had that uh, show on Vice, the uh, like talk show type. Yes, thing. I was just wondering if there was any, if that was coming back, if there was anything like that that you're going to do in the future. I, I just really enjoy it. Thank you. I enjoyed doing that very much. You know, Vice was uh, it was a weird, weird experience with those guys because I liked them very much, and they're a really hip, uh, very, very smart uh, company, and they're so big now. But it was very difficult to get. Th- everything took a long time. Uh, while you were working with them. And so when we put the uh, show together, uh, my showrunner was uh, a good guy, but he had never run a show like that before, so I didn't have a whole lot of direction. So in the final uh, thing, I'm, obviously they don't want to do any more of them, but they never even told me. So it was. It would have been. I would have been totally fine if they said, "Hey, look, we gave it a shot. We don't want to do any more." But literally leading up to me doing them that week, I didn't know if I was doing two or four. It's a long story, but um, there was no communication with them after. I never got any money for it. Um, so I was like, "All right, whatever." I mean, I, I'm glad they gave me a shot. Um, if they didn't like it, I wish they would have told me, "Hey, Jim, this is not for us." Or, "Hey, look, we'd like you to to do it like this or not do it." But I never got any feedback, bro. So it's almost like when you meet a girl and you go out once and you fuck her, and then she never calls you back. You're like, "Wow, I wish she would have let me know that she didn't want to go out again." But I guess her lack of calling me is her indication. So I have no answer as to exactly what their feelings about it were, but it obviously was not good because they don't want to do it again. Yeah, well, but if if somebody else came and said, "Hey, we want to try this. We liked it. You would do it." Or? Of course, I would. Yeah, I enjoy doing that, dude. One thing I'm doing now, besides working in the morning with Opie, and I, and I genuinely don't know what I'm doing in October. And I'm not saying that as a negotiation contract. I just don't know what I want to do. The UFC podcast I'm doing with Matt Serra has been a lot of fun. Like, so I still love doing broadcasting and talking, and I'm really enjoying uh, that. So, you know, who knows, man. I just don't know, but I would absolutely do that uh, if the opportunity came up. Sure, all right. Wait, can can I ask what what is that? The podcast with Matt, Matt Sarah? I never heard of that. UFC Unfiltered. It's their official podcast, and me and Matt are the hosts. When we just taped episode four today, we interviewed John Jones. Uh, really good episode today. So it'll be up tomorrow, and just check for UFC Unfiltered. Even if you're not a UFC fan, we bullshit enough about other stuff where I really think that you can get a lot out of it. No, you just got another subscriber. Thank you for telling me. All right, man. I appreciate the call. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Let's see here real quick. Um, ooh, Lou in Florida. We only got two minutes. Hello, Lou. Hey, Jim. How you doing, man? I'm good, bud. Hey, real quick. Uh, I've been married for a long time, 15 years around that area. Um, this relationship got a little stale. Uh, I met a chick online, you know, unintentionally, not on the site or anything. Uh, she lives in another state up there by you guys. Uh, fell madly in love with each other. Uh, I've been up there a couple of days. She's down here a couple of days. Uh, the wife found out, you know, I was going to leave the wife. It's just, it's, you know, this chick is, uh, it's, I don't know, it's crazy in love with her. Um, uh, anyway, long story short, she ended it. Basically, we ended it because I hadn't left my wife yet. Sure. Uh, I'm still crazy in love with this chick, man. I can't get over her. And it's, I mean, we were, we were going to be together and all that crap. But whole nine yards. I know we don't have much time. But anyway, um, any advice on what I can do to either get over her or should I, I mean, possible that it is the real thing Quick question lou do you have any kids i don't know if you said that i'm sorry I, yeah yeah i have three kids a little harder to leave then well i mean here's the thing do you want to stay married and be unhappy and have a bad marriage for the kids or that's where i'm, that's where I'm at do you that's, think though with this girl sometimes dude the high of getting away with it is the fun of it do you honestly think you'd be as in love if you were both free and clear and it wasn't a reaction to something else 
I I believe I would be, but it's if that's where I'm kind of that's where I get cold feet. That's why I didn't leave before, you know, because I'm kind of leery about it. But I really do believe. It. I mean, I think about it all. I haven't talked to her in a month. I got some nuts about her. I'm crazy about her, and I feel guilty because my wife thinks everything's okay now, and you know she's giving me another chance, and I and I don't, you know, I feel guilty because I don't love her like I should. Like I'm crazy about this other chick. Nuts. Maybe you should talk to the other chick again and say, look, if I leave my wife, would you want... Because the other girl may have found someone. Or she may go, no, I'm over it. You know what I mean? I wouldn't just dump the wife yet. But uh, maybe you talk to the other girl and go, look, I mean, I still have this. Would you be willing to take it a shot? And if she says yes, then maybe you talk to the wife. I mean, if I was a a kid... I mean, I'm young at heart. (laughs) But I I would rather be with parents who were separated and got along than two parents fighting and resentful and not, you know? So I don't... But I've never been married... So I always, I always uh, say that, like, I don't have as much right to give advice on that because I've never been married. But I, I think honesty is the best policy, allegedly. I've never been honest in a relationship. But uh, you might want to try talking to this girl first. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Good luck, Lou. That's a tough spot to Thanks. be in. And I apologize to all the people on the phones who we didn't get to. Um, this is a very fucking popular program, as you can imagine. Why? I'm filled with charisma and wisdom. And uh, I appreciate you listening. And tune in tomorrow to myself and uh, young, sweet uh, Gregorio Obster. We will be uh, talking to Lenny Dykstra. Today we had the guy who did the Bill Clinton book. Very good guest. And um, his book was called, uh, what was it, Conscience of Character or A Crisis of Character about Bill and Hillary Clinton. Very good. Uh, Gary Byrne, Secret Service agent. And uh, I will talk to you guys tomorrow morning on this very channel. Thanks for listening to The Jim Norton Show. Hear all that advice whenever you want to on demand at SiriusXM.com slash on demand. On SiriusXM.